Let's do another question here. This one is from Brad Bell. I love the what if style question in the last Ask Bruce episode. So I wanted to ask if the steroid trial slash investigation never happened, does Bruce think we still have, we still would have seen a movement to smaller, more technical wrestlers like Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels? That's a great question because there's it's really two parts and the first part is would hogan have left because part of it was after wrestlemania 8 hulk was looking to take not just a little time off but hulk was wanting to go away to go do movies and go do um TV shows and things of that nature, not wrestle every night, did not want to be uh, in the business every day anymore. He was, he was not interested in, in, in working anymore. He wanted to try his hand in Hollywood. So Hulk was leaving steroid trial or not. That left you though, still with, you know, a lot of guys that were big in nature you know you had the ultimate warrior you had uh, psycho sid people like that that were that were big guys that had the look and would that look have continued you know would would first of all you know would warrior and bulldog have left when they did you know they were fired they were fired for you know, steroids and for whatever it was, growth hormone, whatever the hell that was at the time. But would that have happened? You know, would, would the emphasis on a drug-free system been as strong as it was at that time? I think we would have gotten there regardless because – Again, the NFL was moving there. Uh, the NBA was moving there, just trying to, and they they weren't even looking for steroids. Steroids were one of the, like the last thing on their checklist, and they were looking for cocaine and drugs of abuse. Well, really, when everything started, steroids were legal. They were prescribed by a doctor. Um, so it, it just became a catch-22. So you have to ask, wonder, man, well, if Hogan had stayed around, what would that look like? Would would the emphasis still be on large, you know, the big muscled-up guys? Um, and would there ever be a, you know, point where a Bret Hart or a Shawn Michaels could break through and become the stars that they became? I am a, an optimist in that I believe that the reason I picked Brett and Sean is I believe that Brett and Sean both had the ability and the talent to break through and that they could have been three foot nothing and still could have broken through based on their talent, their charisma, their promo skills, maybe not so much Brett, but hey, um, but no, Brett had, Brett had an unspoken man, you know, rock star charisma. Sean was Sean, and they had great charisma that just shined through and really, really helped an awful lot. I think they eventually would have broken through. Um, but I do think that there probably would have been an emphasis on larger talent for a while, at least. And then as things progressed, and, and you got to ask yourself, too, if steroids had never ever become you know to the point where issue. they were illegal yeah you know what would have happened it is interesting to think about uh tris dixon says what backstage fight did bruce see that got the most out of control what was the wildest backstage dust up you ever saw i you know i saw the uh jacques rougeau and dynamite kid fight which that wasn't so much out of control as much as it was, it was just a brutal, it was a brutal fight um, from the standpoint of Jacques got that first punch in and Dynamite Kid had nothing after that. And nobody jumped in because Raymond was there. Pat tried to break it up. Finally, they got it 
got them separated and, and got everybody away. It just was brutal. Look, you know, real fights aren't that that much fun when you're that close. Yeah, yeah, and it's even different when you go, oh, well, UFC and, and everything. UFC's controlled. When a fight is not controlled and you've got somebody beating the hell out of someone and maybe it's one and or two of your friends that you know. Not good. It's a, it's a different feeling, and it's just not good. Um, Shawn Michaels and uh, Adnan Al Casey got into a fight um, backstage at one point, and it was it was uncomfortable be, for two reasons. One, Adnan really wouldn't fight back for a couple of reasons. Um, I think Adnan would have, I think Adnan felt that he would have hurt Sean. Yeah. Um, Sean was also on, on the way up. And I also think that Sean regretted, you know, even getting into the altercation. I think both men regretted getting into the altercation because they both felt like, oh man, you know, why, how, how do we get to that? You know what I mean? I know so, it sounds stupid, Bruce, but what was the issue? Do you recall? Like, I know now it doesn't even matter, but what, what I mean, this hard for me to Between Sean and Adnan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was during, it was during the Iraq war and Adnan had not been able to get a hold of his family. When he got a hold of his family, found out someone in his family had been killed oh. and uh, Adnan was upset uh, yeah. at TV and words were exchanged. And it just escalated and it just, it just escalated to where, you know, I think I'd gone through a chair and Sean came at him and, you know, kicked it, him. Oh. And, and then, and then it was, it was, Adnan was just basically protecting himself. Mm. But Adnan, you know, look, he was an old shooter. He was also much older at the time. So who knows? But you could tell Sean really didn't want Sean didn't really want to fight him. No. No. And Adnan didn't want to fight Sean. And and afterwards, you know, when you you get together and apologize, well, what were we even fighting about? Man, I'm sorry. I didn't know about your family. You know, silly things can escalate when you don't have all the knowledge. And Things like that, you know, I've never, God, I've seen just <laughs> Virgil. I've seen Virgil, like, just beat the hell out of uh, a fan who hit DiBiase one time. Um, that was one of the most one-sided. The guy started bouncing like he thought he was... Uh, Donnie Lalonde or something, and, uh, <laughs> and Virgil just came in with about four punches. And on the first one, you could see the, the ducks and birds flying over his head because he was out. He was he was done. And Virgil followed up all the way to the ground. And seeing things like that, just different stuff. Uh, Butch Reed and uh, the Barbarian. Oh God, damn. You know, but they they got tired, you know. Nobody wanted again. It was they wanted to fight until they got to the fight. Right. Everybody wants to fight till you get hit. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's it's um you know, different different feel and, and and different thing when it's actually people you know and your friends that are hitting each other and you're watching blood come out of their eye or somebody going for an eye things like that it, it's just not a lot of fun to watch and it happens but especially in this business man it ain't ballet some things happen in the ring that are accidents things are said backstage where when you're pissed off eddie guerrero and kurt angle where eddie guerrero tried double leg kurt angle <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Eddie, you tried to double leg an Olympic gold medalist. And he just, I know, I'm stupid. <laughs> it's, but it was just frustration on Eddie's part. He was just frustrated. Yeah. 
And that frustration came out because it's a physical business in physicality. So there, you know, there, I think the worst was probably, you know, watching Jacques Rougeau and the Dynamite Kid because Dynamite just had, had nothing there. He had nothing, never had a chance.